the established feeds. Uh, All right, hello and welcome on board the Cessna. We're over the heart of Texas tonight on our way up to Austin. And we're going to be looking to do the ILS 36 right approach in Austin. So we're somewhere down here right now, starting out on a 030 heading, roughly pointed in the direction of the airport. And we're going to ask air traffic control for the ILS approach, and then they'll give us assignments for vectors to final. So we'll start by making our request by letting them know that we have the ATIS information at Austin, and then we'll have the controller tell us what uh, instructions are next. So this is Houston Center that we're talking to right now, and that's what we have dialed in on the uh, radio. Center 9 or 334 Hotel have X-ray at Austin. Request the ILS 36 ray. Right? Center 9334 Hotel, Roger, fly heading 090, access for the approach, maintain 5000. 090, maintain 5000 for vectors. Okay, zero nine zero. So we'll start that right turn. Interesting Texas accent this uh, Houston controller has, huh? So the zero nine zero heading is our vector that we're assigned in order to get us lined up with the localizer, with the approach course. What that zero nine zero heading will do is it'll get us pointed roughly perpendicular with the approach course. And then as we get closer, that controller will assign us new headings or new vectors to get us established on the localizer course. So we'll stay on this assigned heading and altitude for now. So we were told the 090 heading and then 5,000 feet. And we'll hold that heading and altitude as we get closer and closer to the localizer, to the approach course for ILS 36 right at Austin. And the next thing we might expect would be for air traffic control to tell us to descend. 5,000 feet is rather high. So in order to get ready for the approach, he might tell us to go down in altitude in order to get closer to the altitudes that are listed on the approach plate. 105 Frontier Flight for 2, good evening, thank you. 99334 Hotel at the center maintain 3000. Down to 3, 3 4, hotel. Okay, there we have it, 3000 feet. Now why 3000? Well, if we look at the approach plate and we see where we're approaching from, the controller has us going on a vector that's putting us right between the two points, shoe and bald, on the approach course. And if you notice that number, 2,500, that's going to be the altitude limit as we're going on that segment between bald and shoe. So we have to be at least higher than that. And we can even anticipate further that when we get the actual clearance to join the localizer, the controller might tell us to descend down to that 2,500 foot altitude. So a little bit of context helps a lot here, knowing that these are the minimum altitudes on certain segments of the approach. The next thing we can expect from the controller is a vector to turn to intercept the localizer. We're on a perpendicular course now, so we want to be on a little bit of a gentler angle when we intercept. November 9334, hotel turn left heading 050. Correction turn left heading 030, join the runway 36 right localizer. Left heading 030 will join the localizer for 36 right, 34 hotel. All right, so we've gotten our vector to intercept. So we're turning to a heading of 030, and that'll put us on about a 30 or 35 degree intercept to the localizer. We're gonna hold that until we actually pick up the localizer course. Now we're not cleared for the approach yet. Sometimes we get this vector to intercept at the same time that we get our clearance for the approach. All we've gotten right now is the vector. So at this point, we'd of course have already gotten our ILS frequency tuned in and identified. And all we're doing right now is we're holding that 030 course, watching that needle on the VOR head swing from the right towards the center. And once it starts swinging towards the center, that's when we'll make our left turn to the approach course, 355 degrees in the case of this uh, ILS approach. Now the next thing we're going to get from the controller is the approach clearance. And the approach clearance is going to be a bit of a mouthful. This is something that a lot of instrument students struggle with, this very uh, specific point in the instruction from air traffic control. What the air traffic controller is going to tell us is first our position, so it'll be a number of miles from a certain fix. And then we'll get an instruction such as maintain a heading or descend to an altitude or maybe even both. And then we'll be cleared for the approach and the controller will actually tell us the name of the approach just for confirmation. 
And we're going to have to read all of that back, so it can be a bit of a mouthful. So feel free to watch this one a couple of times. November 3, 3, 4, hotels, two miles from Shu, descent and maintain 2,500 until established on the localizer, cleared ILS, runway 36 right approach. Down to 2,005 until established, cleared for the ILS 36 right, 9334 hotel. So it gets a bit wordy, those clearances, and we didn't even get the vector to intercept in that clearance. We got it before, so you can imagine how much of a mouthful it can become. So the controller is done with us now, and he can hand us off to Tower at Austin, so we'll get that handoff now. November 9, 334, hotel contact uh, Austin, Tower at 121.0, we'll see you. Tower 1210, thanks for everything, 34 hotel. So we'll tune in the tower frequency and give them a call. Austin Tower, Cessna Manor 334 Hotels, establishing on the ILS 36 right. Cessna Niner 334 Hotel, Austin Tower, good evening. Altimeter 290, runway 36 right, clear to land. Wind is 040 at 13, gust 25. Runway 36 right, clear to land. Okay, so that part's pretty straightforward. Easy come, easy go. Contact the tower and get our landing clearance. So the breakdown of responsibility in the air traffic control system is the approach controller, or in this case, uh, Houston Center. The, the controller handling the approach is responsible for clearing you for the approach. The tower controller is responsible for clearing you to land. So that's, that's the, the breakdown of the responsibility and why it was that we got the handoff when we did. First, the controller at Houston, uh, our, 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 our lovely Texan gentleman, <laughs> handed a, uh, g gave us our clearance for the ILS, and then once we were cleared, handed us off to Tower, who then gave us clearance to land. So that's how air traffic control works on an ILS approach clearance. Um, th there's not a lot going on, but you imagine that being in the cockpit and flying on the instruments, trying to keep the needle centered, and then also having to manage all that communication can get really, really uh, a lot and can, can really add some tasks to you in the cockpit. So feel free to watch this a couple of times and um, hopefully this video has helped make things a little bit more clear for when you're actually up there flying IFR. But for now, we have our landing clearance, so we're on the ILS and it's just a matter of following the needles. Localizer left and right and the glide slope up and down, all the way down until we get runway in sight and we can proceed visually to the runway.